Welcome back. Now, according to some health experts, it is estimated that 70% of blood cancer and blood disorder sufferers require a stem cell donation from a non-related donor. However, a general lack of information and education are major barriers preventing eligible potential donors from registering on the global registry. To address this, Blood Stem Cell Registry and Donor Recruitment Center, DKMS Africa, has partnered with Lusandi Medical Animation Studios to create a three-part educational animation series focusing on a child's experience with a blood disorder and her journey to find a blood stem cell donation. Now, to tell us more about this, let's chat to South African pediatric homeotologist and creator of LMAS, Dr. Candice Hendricks. Good morning, Dr. Welcome to Morning Live. Let's start with you telling us more about how this partnership between DKMS Africa and Lusandi Medical Animation Studios studio came about. Good morning and uh, it's lovely to be here. So the collaboration between DKMS and Lusandi Medical Animation Studio was very easy because the vision of the two organizations is actually very aligned. So what we try to achieve is to, to break through the fear barrier that people may have to becoming stem cell donors in South Africa by educating them in a very simple format in the form of animations. So we're very proud of this initiative and we're really hoping that more donors can register. Mm -hmm. What is the cause of the fear? What is at the, uh, uh, you know, at the bottom of people being so fearful? I think at the root of fear is always lack of education. People do not know to be encouraged to step up if they do not know how to donate, why to donate, and what the impact of that donation actually is. Mm -hmm. So, yes, by, by providing them with education for them to actually be more comfortable to donate, that is what we are aiming to achieve with this. And how important is it to educate potential stem cell donors about this and in the most simple and understandable way? I think it's critically important. We are in desperate need of more donors on our local registry in South Africa, particularly those donors of African descent. So we, we have to advocate for this to actually make this a reality. What is the information at the moment? What is, what is the current information that exists and why do we need to up that? So at the moment, Generally, when you are educating somebody, it will be somebody telling you about how to become a donor. So the reason we created animations is the advantage of having an animation is that you can actually re-watch this multiple times. We have it available in five local South African languages so that you can actually listen to this in your first language, which is also an advantage and therefore allow people to be comfortable before putting themselves up to be a donor. Now, you know, speak to us about why the decision to go the animation route in trying to get your message across. Yes, yeah, so in discussing, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> in discussing how to actually get information across to people that they could relate to better, the best way to actually do this is in a story format. So that people can look at a character and envision themselves as being that character rather than somebody just giving you a pamphlet or, or giving you a piece of information. You can actually put yourself in that person's position. Imagine the fears that you may have in going through that process and therefore we are able to educate in a more relatable fashion. And that is why I think animation storytelling and education is so powerful. Yeah, and the animation video demonstrates the ease of registering as a donor and the life-changing impact of the donation of the patient. Speak to us more about this. Yes, so we are trying to answer two questions in these videos, not only how to become a donor, but what happens when you are actually identified as a person that is a donor for a person, the process that you will go through in that, and also, if you are a patient that actually has the joy of receiving that transplantation, what is your journey? It's not an easy journey, but of course it is the opportunity at a second life. So those are the two issues that we are actually trying to cover in the videos for the patient and for the donor. Mm -hmm.
Talk to us uh, about the making of this three-part series and the impact you hope it will have in creating awareness, you know, about stem cell donation. What we are hoping to achieve is the videos are now widely available on social media platforms of, the, of both DKMS Africa and Lusandi Medical Animation Studio. And we hope that everybody that is watching at home and everybody that has access to these videos will watch them. Because as I mentioned, if you are fearful, then you need to be educated. If you watch these videos, you can watch them over and over again to actually try and get to the nitty gritty of what is expected of you and to see how simple it is to save another person's life. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to actually get more people onto the registry. The more people there are, the more lives we can actually save. And we have to put ourselves in a position to say, what if it was me? If I needed a donation one day, how wonderful wouldn't it be to have another person to actually give me that gift? And all of us should put ourselves in that position because life is unpredictable. We never know if ourselves, a family member, a loved one or a friend would be in that position to actually need this. So we really hope that people will step up that we are here to provide more information if you are fearful. But what we need at the end of the day is somebody to say, I want to step up and be a donor. And how does one uh, step up to be a donor? What are some of the requirements? All right, so the, the basic requirement is that you have to be between the ages of 18 and 55 with general good health. Mm -hmm. But of course, we, we don't want it to be cumbersome. So what you should do if you are interested Go to the dkmsafrica.org website. There is a tab that says, I want to become a donor. Click on that tab and it will go through a series of questions that you answer. At the end of, that quest of those questions, it's just a few questions. You can then order your kit to be delivered at your house or at your workplace. And this is actually something that you can do in the comfort of your own home. A laboratory technologist does not need to do this. It's three earbud looking swabs that you take to the inside of your cheeks that you can do yourself. So it is completely non-invasive. You put it back in the envelope and you contact DKMS to say, please come and pick up my swabs. They will then pick it up and do the tissue typing and put you onto the register. So when you are identified to be a donor for a patient, you will then be contacted to then follow the rest of the process. So that is really the, the simple process that is required to become a donor. Doctor, what are some of the success stories that you've been able to encounter over the years? All right. So, I mean, we, we have to be frank that if you are a person of African descent, your chances of getting a donor are less than 20%. So we are not doing nearly enough bone marrow transplants. But there are, of course, success stories. If you have a very rare or very aggressive malignancy, stem cell transplant is your only hope. And there are many success stories of patients that have undergone this procedure and have gone on to enjoy a normal, regular, fruitful life. And this is the difference. The person, if they recover, are not going to be on chronic medication for the rest of their lives. And you are actually saving their life because without that transplant, of course, the, the demise is inevitable, which is extremely sad. So when we say it is life-saving, it is truly life-saving. There are no alternatives at the point at which a person needs a stem cell transplant. And just for you personally as a doctor, you know, what have been some of the highlights of being part of this? I am truly so proud to be part of this initiative, mm. working with very ill children who are so brave and who are undergoing these very, very difficult treatments. They really do suffer a lot, mm. but they have a wonderful attitude. It would bring me just absolute joy to know that I would be able to save more of those children's lives. So. Being part of this initiative is a life goal. I call it a life goal. To be able to educate my own patients and their families to say that you are not alone. Do not be afraid. We are walking alongside you. And with this initiative, we hope to give you a second chance at life to save more children's lives that are suffering. It is really a pleasure, a privilege, and an honor. 
All right. Dr. Candice Hendricks, good luck with the work. In fact, let's give people more details before we end this conversation. How do people get a hold of this? Where do they watch the series? All right. So Lusandi Medical Animation Studio, as well as DKMS Africa, have launched the videos on their social media sites. Mm -hmm. So Facebook, LinkedIn. And the videos are also available on the Lusandi Medical Animation Studio YouTube channel. So all of the videos are there in the five languages, as mentioned. So absolutely anybody can have access to them. And we really encourage people to go and watch them. All right, Dr. Candice Hendricks, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, good luck with the project. We've been chatting about how DKMS Africa and Lusandi Medical Animation Studio have teamed up to save lives through education. So if you are uh, able to be a stem cell donor, please uh, go out and take them out on their social media platforms, different social media platforms. They've made it a bit easy uh, for uh, people to access it uh, and access those videos and be uh, donors. All right, thank you so much there to Dr. Hendricks.